Here's everything that happened in this case. The incident began this morning when Mahiru spoke to Hyoko. Mahiru most likely played Twilight Syndrome Murder Case, the video game provided to us as the motive. She probably wanted to discuss it with someone else who also appeared in the game as a character. Hyoko accepted Mahiru's invitation, and they promised to have a more detailed conversation about it later. However, someone else overheard their exchange. The killer. The killer eavesdropped on their conversation and used their promise to devise a specific murder plan by preparing a specific item. They planned to manipulate the two's action. That item was the letters. They sent fake letters to both Mahiru and Hyo. The letter Mahiru received told her to come to the beach house at 2.30 p.m. And the letter Hyoko received told her to come to the beach house at exactly 2 p.m. By providing different times, the killer was able to lure them to the beach house separately. Hyoko totally trusted that letter, showed up at the beach house at 2 p.m., just like it said, and was drugged into unconsciousness by the killer lying in wait. After putting Hyoko to sleep, the killer immediately hid her inside the closet so they could frame her as the killer later. At 2.30 p.m., Mahiru, she was completely unaware that she had been targeted for murder. Approaching her from behind, the killer struck the defenseless Mahiru with a specific metal bat that was left at the scene of the crime. The bat was brought down onto the back of Mahiru's head, and with that, she took her last breath. According to Mikan's autopsy, Mahiru died instantly, so she probably never knew who killed her. With that, the killer achieved their goal of killing Mahiru and began to tamper with the crime scene. They dragged Mahiru's body so that it blocked the door leading to the room. Also, the mask found at the scene of the crime was something the killer personally left. I'm not really sure why. My guess is, it's something similar to a calling room. That's how the crime scene we discovered was created. However, by moving Mahiru's body, the killer got blood splatter on. Plus, the shower room had no water because it was out of order, so they couldn't wash it off. But the killer expected something like that to happen. Instead of the shower, the killer used something else to wash the blood off their body. They used plastic water bottles that were inside the beach house. We can assume they carried the bottles to the shower room before the sequence of events in place of showering. They washed the blood off their body with water bottles instead. However, they had no choice but to dispose of the empty bottles in the beach house's trash can. Littering is against the rules, and it would have taken too much time to throw them away somewhere else. After the killer washed off the blood, they hid in a specific spot inside the clue. The killer hid inside the surfboard case that they had already emptied beforehand. After some time had passed, the sleeping drug used on Hyoko wore off, and she woke up. I can imagine how badly Hyoko must have panicked when she came out of- I mean, she made plans to see Mahiru, who lay dead right in front of her. From the shock and panic of being considered a murder suspect, Hyoko fled from the beach house. Because of that, she left footprints in the sand. Everything was a trap set by the killer to frame- after Hyoko left, the killer finally and placed a gummy that they brought with them to shift our suspicion toward Ironically, placing that gummy is what helped clear our suspicion toward Hyoko. Finally, the killer began preparing to escape from the beach. They couldn't risk leaving their footprints in the sand, so they escaped the beach house. The small window in the shower, however, that window is rather high up and can't be reached. The bamboo sword they always carry with them. The killer took the bamboo sword out of its bag, tied the bag to the sword's handle, and used the sword as a step stool to reach the small window while holding the sword bag in their hand. As long as they're able to reach the window, all they had to do was pull the bag to retrieve the sword. And so the killer left the beach house and appeared before us as if nothing had happened. But 
Their wet hair and swimsuit didn't dry right away. There also weren't any towels at the beach house. So when the killer met up with us, they said they had been swimming for a while as well. So how about it? This is the truth behind the incident you caused. Isn't that right, Heko Peko Yama? I see. And what of it? She's like, totally cool with it. I haven't done anything to be ashamed of. What are you saying?